Good morning, Unity, Unity of Madison. Good morning. Good. Uh, thank you for choosing to spend this uh, time with us, whether you're online or you're present. We've, we feel your presence, and uh, after the service, we invite you, those of you who are present, to come down to the Namaste Cafe for some refreshments. Uh, I am Louis Phillips, and I am your celebration assistant today. So, let's start with our opening song, Freedom. So let's all start over. Put your feet on the floor, take a deep breath, just breathe within and relax. Sweet Spirit, thank you for the opportunity for all of us here and streaming to come together in divine love. We know we will be blessed by Reverend Richard's knowledge on radical forgiveness today. Later this morning, we will be guided by divine order for our annual meeting. With gratitude, we thank our board members for their work leading our church. We will feel grace and peace in our hearts this morning. Through the Christ within us, we can do all things. Thank you, sweet spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Diane. And now we will have the congregational song, I am free and I am unlimited. Update. 
As far as the speaker schedule is concerned, next Sunday will be Reverend Richard Bunch, virtually. And the Sunday after that, March 5th, we'll have Barry Roberts, our licensed unity teacher. <laughs> Today is our annual membership uh, meeting at noon. Um, the meeting is open to anyone, and it'll start right at noon. Uh, as a thank you for those attending, there will be an assortment of pizza provided downstairs in the hospitality area after this service. So please hang around for pizza and the meeting. Uh, the fourth Friday fellowship is Friday, February 24th at 10 a.m., weather permitting. Uh, this is at the Lakeside Coffee House on 402 West Lakeside Street, and it's at 10 a.m., I think I mentioned that. If the weather is iffy on Friday, contact Ann Schwartz or Diane Gould, and their phone numbers will be in the e-blast later this week. Also, uh, the game day, which is scheduled for Wednesday, has been canceled due to the weather. So um, we're just being a little proactive here. Um, Class led by Jeff Nesta, Keep a True Lent, begins on Sunday, uh, February 26th at 11.45 a.m. And they will meet in the lower level. There are books available in the library, or they can be purchased through the Unity Bookstore or on Amazon. You can contact Nancy Keeney in the bookstore with any questions that you have. There's a sign-up in the foyer outside. So Keep a True Lent. It's, it's actually a really great book. And uh, if there are, there are many more events that are on our website, so if you are interested, please go to our website and uh, review the upcoming events. Okay, at this time, we are going to have Raimi come up to welcome new members. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So it is my pleasure to do the new member installation today. And so I'm going to call forth, forward, I mean, call forward, uh, our new, someone who's becoming a new member, Phyllis Nettesheim. And if you would join me up here. So I'm gonna read this to you. And at a certain point, I'm going to invite you to say yes, OK? <laughs> so we, the members and friends of Unity of Madison, welcome you as a new member. As you are making a commitment to your spiritual growth, we are committed to supporting you on your journey. We support you through our prayer chaplains program, our care team, classes and events that allow you to be a vital part of our spiritual community. So I'm gonna, don't say yes yet. Soon, <laughs> soon, Phyllis, just hold back. Do you agree to give of your time, talent, and ties in supporting Unity of Madison to follow our mission transforming lives through inspiration, connection, and sacred service to support our vision, celebrating a world transformed by love and modeling our core values and agreeing to be accepting, empowering, heart-centered, truth-seeking, and generous. If so, please say yes. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> At this time, will, the, will you all stand up? And we're going to send her beautiful energy as we say the unity blessing. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you, and we behold the Christ you are. Thank you, and congratulations. And I have a certificate. 
<laughs> Thank you, Phyllis. I'd like to take this opportunity now to welcome anybody who might be here for the first time. If you are here for the first time, uh, you can pick up a packet of information at the back table. And uh, if, if not there, you can also go to our website or email our office at office at unityofmadison.org and we'll send you a packet of information. So now if you would please join me with an affirmation for our church, Unity of Madison. And it should be up here. Okay. Together, unity of Madison is abundantly blessed. Creative people are drawn to us. Divine ideas flow through us. Financial resources bless us. And with God as our source, we accomplish mighty works together. Thank you. And now it is time to greet your neighbors in any way that you feel comfortable. As we sing, I see the light in your eyes. Our uh, music today is going to be provided by the Unity Jazz Band and Pete Calgaro. <laughs> and our speaker in meditation, a little change in plans here, is going to be Barry Roberts. <laughs> Gratitude for the week. Um, this week we would like to recognize the dedication of our prayer chaplains. Every week they put in countless hours to provide prayer support after the services and throughout the week to any congregant who wishes their support. They hold our congregation in prayer during our services and our meetings. Their generosity of their time is a true gift to the unity of Madison and we thank you for making a difference in our community. Let's hear it for the prayer chaplain. Okay, now it is time for our, the reading of the Daily Word. The word for today is aspire. I hold a vision of an equitable world, a global community that supports and encourages all people to live fully and reach their unique potential. I feel a kinship with those who hold a similar vision and work to realize it. My past experiences and present perspective show me what is mine to do and how I can contribute to realizing my vision. I trust I will be guided and inspired to find avenues of service where the things I do best and most enjoy doing will be most helpful. I bless people I may never meet and I offer my time, talents, and efforts to further my vision of a new way of living. With clarity of purpose, I take my place among a growing network of caring, visionary souls. And the scripture reading today is from Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12. 
The gifts he gave were to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. And now if you would repeat with me the affirmation for today. Okay. I aspire to help create a world that works for all. And now, special music. Thank you, Jazz Band. 
Great as always. All right. Welcome, everybody. I am not Richard. <laughs> Just to fill those of you in who were expecting a video from uh, Reverend Richard today, we, we had a technical issue. It's on his end where he's having technical problems getting his video to us. He actually did it, but he couldn't. Anyways, it's a long story. So he called me yesterday afternoon and said, ah, can you, can you do something? <laughs> said, sure. <laughs> so that's how I got here. And then I'm not doing his topic because he's already got the video and all that. So. Um, Two weeks ago, I did an overview of the 12 spiritual powers. And then last week, I did uh, focusing on the power of love. And some people have been saying, you know, a number of people said, let's do more follow-up on those powers. So I thought about it. And today, it, I looked at stuff I had done before. And a year ago today, I did a, a, a talk on letting go for Lent, because Lent started this week. And I thought, oh, that's good. Well, what is that for 12 powers? And what is letting go is elimination. That's the power of elimination or renunciation. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. And um, the first thing is, there's a magic elixir to help us with elimination, to cleanse our soul. <laughs> Fiber, metamucil, whatever. It even has meta in it, like metaphysics. <laughs> so it's a metaphysical cleansing. But in any case, we all need cleansing of one kind or another. We all need elimination. It's part of our physical processes as well as our spiritual processes. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Next, uh, the power of elimination is the ability to release, remove, denounce, deny, say no, and let go. And that comes from this book, Power Up, which is by Paul Hasselbeck and Cher Holton. And it's kind of a modern language version of Fillmore's 12 Powers. And so that's the definition there. Also, the color is russet the Apostles Thaddeus, and the locations the lower abdominal region, which makes sense. <laughs> All right. So Fillmore associated, associated the 12 apostles with the 12 powers, and then he associated different parts of the body to the 12 powers. The colors came later by someone else, but I'm wearing as russet as I can get. You know, brown, russet, whatever. This is as close as I could come to, to, to that color. So, um, <laughs> in any case, um, so the question then becomes, next, next slide, is what are we going to eliminate? What are we going to eliminate? And these are some of the things, our judgments, our assumptions, our resentments, our anger, and our negative self-talk. Because if we hang on to those kinds of things, we're not going to feel good. <laughs> Just like if we don't have the physical release, we're not going to feel good. In fact, OK, this is, takes me way back. In my Boy Scout days, like in junior high, I went on a weekend camping trip. And one of the other scouts had such a constipation problem, they had to take him to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, so I mean, this is a, it's, it's a big deal. Physically, we can't operate if we don't have the elimination also. <laughs> and we can't get to where we want to go without eliminating some of the things that get in our way. So I love the music today, even though we didn't coordinate it on freedom, right? So you want freedom, we got to eliminate some of the roadblocks in our minds and in our thoughts to get to freedom, all right? We don't just jump to that. We've got a process to get there. 
And so from Fillmore, he says renunciation. He originally called this uh, power renunciation, and he'll explain a little bit here. He says, a letting go of old thoughts in order that new thoughts may find place in consciousness. A healthy state of mind is attained when the thinker willingly lets go of old thoughts, takes on the new. This is illustrated by the inlet and outlet of a pool of water. The center of renunciation, sometimes called elimination, and that's the one that stuck, in the lower part of the abdomen, carries forward work of elimination of error thoughts from the mind and waste from the body. So it's a similar process in the physical and the metaphysical. Okay. So are there ever times you feel blocked? I think we all do at times. Um, so why? You know, what is it that's blocking us? And I think it's these, these things up here. So just briefly, judgments. It doesn't mean using our judgment, which is a power. Judgment and wisdom is one of the 12 powers. It's being judgmental, okay, about others or about yourself, right? We judge ourselves a lot, too. And then we put ourselves down or, or we feel guilty or we do, you know, all these, these things. And that, that's just not helpful. So if we've built up that kind of judgmental habit, about ourselves or about others, we need to release that to let the other thoughts, the positive, productive, constructive thoughts come in. Assumptions. A lot of times we work on assumptions like, well, this is the way it is. It's always been this way. Well, okay, so it's always been that way, but that's still just an assumption. You can change that if it's not working. If it's what's making you feel blocked, then you can let that go. And so we look at what assumptions are we making. And a lot of times these things aren't super conscious, like just right in your face. It takes some meditation or contemplation and some ob observation of yourself to think about what is getting in the way that I'm producing in my thinking, in my feelings. Resentment towards others and um, anger towards others, or yourself, again, too. And uh, Reverend Richard will be talking about radical forgiveness, so that's where a lot of the, the resentment and anger kinds of things fit in, so I'm not gonna get into that too much. But you can understand, if I'm holding on to those kinds of things, it does not feel good, and it doesn't allow me to really express spirit the way I could if I let go of those things. And that makes it better for me and for others, too. And then the negative self-talk. Uh, and there's a lot of different terms for that, monkey mind and so on and so forth. And there's a lot of negative things that we've been taught and, and our assumptions and conditions, whether it's in schools or in our family life or personal life or work life. Um, Sometimes we, we get into a mode where we don't give ourselves the best talk, <laughs> right? We don't really see ourselves as the expression of the Christ that's out there. That is us. We are the expression. And again, these things can be quite subtle. And one example that I'll, I'll give for myself is the last few months, I was reintroduced to a tool uh, called the Enneagram. Has anyone ever? Yeah, a number of people know of that. So it's like a personality styles thing, more spiritual, and it's got some different depth to it. And so a couple months ago, I, I did the online assessment and it came back with my thing, and I'm a six, in case anyone cares. But. <laughs> But the six, one of the, it just, I've been working on it for months because it really kind of freaked me out. <laughs> because it says I'm driven by fear, which, what? You know, that isn't the way I see myself. In fact, for like a million years, I've worked to not, a lot, you know, be driven by fear. 
and, and things. And I was like, how, how could that possibly be? So it really kind of twisted my mind. But then as I got into it, this is, that's why you're always prepared. That's because you're always thinking about what could go wrong. You're seeing you know, the, the possibilities of what could, and they call that fear. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm afraid of the worst happening <laughs> at times. And I prepare for it, right? So I've got my flash drive with my backup presentation in my pocket. <laughs> Right? And I've got a thing in the car in case we had no video at all, okay, as a prompt. And I, you know, I'm prepared. Um, another example was, this was literally with Reverend Richard and Vicki, they were taking off after our Christmas Eve service to go to Door County. They had plans to do it that night to just start, but it was not a good weather night. It was below zero, it was blowing snow, it was horrible, you know, and I, I called them up ahead of time and said, are you still planning on going? And thank God, a couple other people said the same thing I said, like, don't. And, um, and so he, he wasn't going to, but I said, that's an example of my kind of fear. I could see what could possibly happen to Richard and Vicki out on the road in those conditions, not used to driving in them. And even if you are, that night was bad, you know? So I anticipate that and wanted to prevent that. Is that fear, you know, so that's the kind of fear they're talking about. And I've been working with that. It's a real interesting concept, though. And so, but it's not real obvious. It took me some time working with this tool and understanding to, to get there. So these things can be quite subtle, and it takes um, some awareness, I would say, and some challenging of yourself to think about, are you holding on to any of these types of things that you'd be better off letting go? Okay. So next, next slide, how do we do this? You know, it's always easy to say do it, right? Just do it. And in Unity, these are the types of things that we teach. Affirmative prayer, so affirmative prayer is uh, um, not begging prayer, not supplication. It's not like, oh, please, God, save me from this. You know, it's, it's affirming the truth of spirit, of God, of, of universe in a positive, constructive way and looking at things in that way. And that's what we teach in prayer. And meditation, which is a huge range of activities. I mean. There's many things that fall under the umbrella of meditation. I mean, there's the sitting meditation, there's walking meditations, like we have our labyrinths, there's meditation through music, through sound, through color. There's all kinds of ways that people meditate and, and are called and to listen, okay? And that's great. Denial. Now, denial is an interesting thing because it doesn't mean like to avoid. It's not avoidance in this case. What this means is when I see something, feel something, hear something in my mind and in my heart, my body, that doesn't serve me, I can deny its power over me. And I can, de I can deny that the external world has power over my mind, okay? So it, denial is really saying, we are all in charge of our minds. Nobody else is, okay? We choose the inputs and the outputs. And to deny the power of something else being able to change me. And this actually took me back to my mother and a lot of people I know that <laughs> sit around and watch the news all day and, and just get more and more and more depressed, right? Because they're letting that influence of things going on in the world, and there are things going on in the world that, that, that aren't very nice. And, and it's, you know, awareness is one thing, but to allow it to make me feel depressed and really not happy, and to do that on a regular, that's all in my mind, if I'm doing that, right? It's not those things out there, because someone else responds differently. And so it's not sticking your head in the sand, it's not avoidance, but it's also not letting those things really 
influence you in a way you don't want it to, okay? Because that doesn't help you grow and it doesn't help you move. I remember one of our uh, guest speakers last year, she said, observe, but don't absorb. And I thought that was very powerful, and it's this type of thing where you can observe what's going on, but don't take it on and absorb it in your heart so that you know, you're depressed and you're hurting, because that's not serving anyone either, right? So uh, that's denial, again, not avoidance denial, but denying the power of other things over my mind. Forgiveness, <coughs> Richard will deal with radical forgiveness next week, so we'll leave that for him. And then gratitude. One of the easiest things we can do to kind of shift perspective is to focus on others and focus on gratitude, being grateful for what we do have. Because a lot of times what we're looking at is what we don't have. Or that someone else has something more than we have. Or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> Let's be grateful for what we do have, as simple as it may be. And that really does help shift and eliminate some of that negative thinking. It's hard to be negative and truly be grateful. Would you agree with that? <laughs> you know? So if I want to shift, that's one of the first things I do is, is think about the gratitude of whatever it is I have, as simple as it may be. Okay. An example from our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore. So Myrtle and Charles in about 1890 started Unity Movement and Charles is kind of the head person you know, thinking, intellectual, studying world religion, studying metaphysics, studying all these things and putting together these thoughts and writing. And Myrtle was the heart, emotional, feeling type person. And she applied the principles to healing and started with working for her on herself because she was someone who was told from doctors and her family that she had tuberculosis and was going to die in a few years and was at frail health and couldn't do things. And she bought that and believed that for, for in her life. And then she had a shift and decided that wasn't the truth. And so part of her process, her process started with denial and elimination, eliminating her old thinking about her illness and her body. So she says, I went to all the life centers of my body and spoke words of truth to them, words of strength and power. I asked their forgiveness for the foolish, ignorant course that I had pursued in the past. When I condemned them and called them weak, inefficient, and diseased. So she was realizing she was talking to her, the self-talk that she had built and had been programmed to believe wasn't serving her and was helping keep her sick. She said, I forgot to tell them that they were free, unlimited spirit. I told them that they were no longer in bondage to the carnal mind, that they were not corruptible flesh, but centers of life and energy omnipresent. And she went on to have full healing and live for decades after that. You know, and that's part of the unity story. And it started with elimination. She wouldn't have been able to do that if she didn't eliminate that thought that she was sick, that her body was sickly and there was nothing she could do about it. And she shifted that, which is one of the most powerful things. And then Charles saw that was going on and they built it up and they built the prayer ministry and they built everything else from unity you know, with his thinking and her heart healing process, so. Uh, where are we here? Okay, next slide. So here's kind of the application aspect of it for you is to, to think about what am I holding on to? 
things that are obvious to me that I believe in, but also what's underneath the surface that, that's kind of driving me or influencing me, you know, that I'm holding on to some belief or some assumption about the world or about myself, and that's, is that helping me? Or is it something I need to let go of? Only you can decide that. No one's gonna decide it for you, okay? How is it serving me? So I see this idea, this thought about my body, about the illness, and like Myrtle said, it wasn't serving her the way she was thinking about her body and her, her illness. It just wasn't serving her in, in the way she wanted to. And so she was shifting it. Do I want to shift it? Do I really want to change it? You know, there's some things that I may know aren't the best for me, but <laughs> you know, I may not want to change it. I may say, okay, it's okay the way it is. But I, and the reason this is in there is because I have to commit to actually changing it, all right? I mean, it's not easy. It's like, I think I need a group for Pringles Anonymous. <laughs> 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 you know, because I love potato chips, and I've gotten it down to just Pringles, but it's like, man, you just can't stop eating them sometimes. <laughs> so I'm trying to change my snacking habits. Okay. And there's times I'm just like, ah, never mind, I'm just going to get a can of Pringles. Lunch out. <laughs> so then that leads to, if you are committed to changing something, then what will you do differently? You know, Myrtle, she, she did this process with talking to her body and her cells for like a couple years and actually transformed her body into a healthy body. So what will I do differently is the other part of it. And that might mean for yourself in terms of just shifting your thoughts, saying I'm going to do a gratitude practice every night as I go to sleep or in the morning when I wake up. That's a shift. That's a change. That's something you can do. We can all do st things like that. There's many things that we can do like that if we choose to. So what will I do differently? And with Pringles, I have to put the top on the can and put it back. And <laughs> then I come back to it and I take more. But <laughs> pretty soon it's gone. And then I'm done. <laughs> okay, so, but that is important. And this also ties into um, our unity fifth principle, which is take things to action, right? The spiritual principles and beliefs that we have here at unity and we see as our truth and our, our way of seeing things, um, they're subject to change as we grow and they have in, in unity. So how do I want to grow? How do I want to change? How do I want to change my language? How do I want to change my thinking to do it differently and actually physically do it, which is our fifth principle, which is basically walk the talk. Don't just talk about it, actually do it. And so it's hard sometimes. What will I do differently? Okay, and, and there's some things, again, you may decide not to. So what I was talking about with the Enneagram, with the fear and being prepared, I choose to be prepared, okay? I'm okay with that, you know? <laughs> it's okay, and so I don't have to change that, but what I, what I did start to work on and I have worked on is another part of the discussion about this style is that um, because there's some innate fear of some kind, you have some low level of anxiety all the time in the background. And that has been true for me. You know, I didn't even realize it a lot of the time, but as I looked at it and I felt it, I did feel it. And so what I've been working on is letting go about of the anxiety of that, you know, because there's really no reason for to be anxious or being prepared you know, or not driving in a snowstorm, you know, with winds and below zero temperatures, right? I mean, so I don't need to be anxious about that. So that's the part of it I'm letting go because it's, it was there and I didn't even realize it until I got in tune with it and felt it. So I encourage you to 
think about these things. What's working? What's really bringing the best out of you? What is your full potential? And is the things you're doing, saying, living, serving you? And I would say, again, that we need to eliminate, uh, let go of various things. And the letting go part, too, is Lent. Part of why I chose this is Lent starts this week, and we have the, the class on Keep It True Lent starting next week. And Lent is about letting go. And that's our preparation process for Easter, is to let go of our stuff that's getting in our way so the Christ self can fully express. And that's what we're here to do. And as a result, next slide. I let go to live happy and free, just as our music said, free. So that's the ultimate goal. We will be happier. We will be more free. Okay? We will have less anxiety. <laughs> We, you know, we'll do more of the right, the right things for us to do, okay? led by spirit and led by our sense of what really matters in the world and what is mine to do to make it happen. So with that, I wish you all a very happy elimination process. <laughs>
And as you just continue to breathe, feel the release with every out breath and more relaxation. And for this power of elimination, bring your focus to the tailbone and imagine an amber-colored light there. Watch it grow brighter and spiral up and down your body. See it sparkling as it circles through your legs and into your feet and toes and up your torso, through your chest, shoulders, arms, hands, and fingers, up into your neck and into your head. Breathe this shimmering light into every cell and atom of your being. Breathe it into your memories. Confident it will do the perfect cleansing work to set you free, to live from your heart's desires and your highest value. God in me now releases and erases from my consciousness all that limits my happiness and well-being. I am open to the activity of divine elimination, now releasing my false beliefs. I give thanks that everything standing in the way of my usefulness to the people in my life and to life itself is removed. I focus on all that is beautiful, worthy, and worthwhile. And in this time, let us take into the silence this feeling and knowledge of release. And what I want to let go to express the Christ that I am. And as we come back to this time and place, I am grateful for this understanding of elimination and my ability to choose, to remove and let go of conditions and thoughts and feelings that are not serving my highest good. I know I have the power to do that. It's the essence of my nature in spirit. And for this blessing, I am grateful. Namaste. And next we'll have a new Lord's Prayer.
Unity Chess Band. Yeah. And it's now the time that we will collect our offerings. So if you would take your tithes and offerings in your hand or place them over your heart and repeat with me the offertory blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And if the ushers would please come forward. And now we will sing our offering song when we give. So come forward, please. And let's bless these gifts. We are grateful for these tithes and offerings. We bless them and we send them forth to do their great and mighty works. Amen. Amen. And now let's uh, repeat together the youth prayer that we've been using to uh, open our hearts to children and families. If you would repeat it with me, please. We now open our hearts to the children and families seeking a welcoming spiritual community filled with light and love, and so it is. Amen. And do we have children? had lots of fun today. We did lots of playtime and we talked about things that we love about ourselves and 
we shared, made some crafts to remind ourselves every day, if we can see it every day, remember those beautiful qualities about ourselves that we really appreciate. Yeah. If anyone wants to say something, they can, but they don't have to. Yeah. I'm making necklaces. wants to talk they can but they don't have to so thank you <laughs> and uh, before before the kids all run away let's bless them okay <laughs> together children and youth education department we love you we bless you we appreciate you and we behold the Christ you are yay Okay, if you want to find your moms and dads. <laughs> okay, and now it is time for our peace song, so let's all rise. does begin with each one of us and let us affirm together our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Mm -hmm. 